Hey there, welcome to Board Gems. This is my weekly video series in which I talk about older board games that I happen to think are gems. And the game this week is definitely a gem because it's been reprinted again and again and again ever since it first came out in the year 2000. I think it was nominated for Game of the Year, or at the very least it was recommended by the jury. And the game is called Cartagena, designed by Leo Colovini, published originally by Venice Connection, like his company, Venice Connection. Um, although I think Winning Moves, you can almost consider it to be the, the main publisher of the game, Winning, Winning Moves Germany. Uh, this is the edition from the mid 2000s. It's for two to five players, ages eight and up, and takes about maybe 45 minutes to play. It really depends on number of players. Uh, a four player game is probably gonna take as long as two two player games. So as I said, this game originally came out in 2000. And then in the mid-2000s, this edition came out. I can't say the artwork is all that great. But they were trying to start a line, uh, winning moves. They were trying to start a line of Cartagena-themed games, including Cartagena 2, you can see here. And uh, Cartagena 2 is basically the same game as Cartagena 1, but it just kind of mixes it up a little bit. Uh, and the most recent edition sort of has both games in the box. I'll show you how it plays. I'll show you how Cartagena plays. I'll show you how Cartagena 2 plays. And then I'll talk about why they're gems. Or at least this one is. To set up the game of Cartagena, you're going to take these boards. There's six of them. And depending on the edition, you might have a different number. But they're double-sided. Some editions have different art on the back. Uh, so you can play a sort of Cartagena 2 with it. But Cartagena 1, the traditional one, has six boards. And each board has six symbols, but the order they're in is different, you'll see. So you're going to mix these up and just randomly create a tunnel. A full game would be six boards. You don't have to use all six. Pick one end of the tunnel to be the start and one end to be the finish. So let's make this the finish. We're going to put the rowboat next to the... Uh, next to the finish there, something like that. Each player gets six pirate pawns, which start at the other end. Now there's a deck of cards. Each card shows one of the six symbols that appears on each board. For the basic game, the normal game of Cartagena, you're gonna remove one of the cards uh, that has an arrow on it. This is for a variant. You're gonna shuffle up the remaining cards and deal six to each player. The winner is the first player to get all six of their pirate pawns to the rowboat. Play is clockwise. On your turn, you have between one and three actions. You can choose up to three actions or as few as one, but you always have to do something. And you can do the actions in any combination. There's only two, and that is play a card to move a pirate forward or draw cards. To move a pirate forward, you play a card from your hand. You pick any one of the six pirate pawns that's not yet on the boat and choose that pawn to move forward to the next unoccupied space matching that symbol. So from the start, playing this card, you would move a pirate pawn to here. But you always move forward to the next unoccupied spot. So if the blue player had played another one of those cards and chose this pirate pawn, they would move to there. But if they chose a different pirate pawn, again, they would move forward to the next unoccupied bottle. It would be here. That goes for other players too. If Brown later played a bottle, the brown pawn would go all the way up to here. If you move a pawn forward and there are no more empty spaces matching the symbol of the card played, then they go onto the boat. You can consider the boat to be all symbols. So in this case, if Brown played this card and moved forward, Brown would skip over this bottle and go all the way to the boat. So that's pretty easy. The catch is that it's hard to get cards. In order to get cards, you actually have to move one of your pawns backwards. You pick one of your pawns, that's not at the start, to move backwards, and it moves backwards all the way to the first occupied space 
that has room for it. Each space can have up to three pirates of any combination of colors. But if you move this one back, it's going to go back to here. And then the player draws a number of cards equal to the number of pawns already there. So blue moving back here would draw one card. If later on brown was here and decided to move this one back, he would go there and brown would draw two. And you can do this multiple times. If it looks something like this, as two of Brown's actions, Brown could move back one here, draw two cards, move back here, draw another two cards. You move back to the next occupied space that has room, and each space only has room for three pirates. So if Brown chose to move this pirate backwards, it would go past this space, because it's already full, back to this space, and then would draw two. So on your turn, you do up to three actions. You usually want to do all your actions, but you may also want to avoid leaving a good opportunity for a later player. And you keep doing that in clockwise order until one player gets all six of their pirate pawns onto the boat, and that player wins. That's it. You're ready to play the standard Jamaica variant version of Cartagena. There is also what's called the Tortuga variant, and the most recent edition of Cartagena doesn't include this. That's where this arrow card comes in handy. So it's a more thinky version of Cartagena. The main differences are, instead of each player having a hand of cards hidden from other players, instead each player has a hand of cards that's face up. So each player can see each other's cards. And instead of drawing cards blind from the deck, Instead, there is a row of cards, up to 12, and you would have this arrow card to show the direction that cards are taken. So whenever you need to draw cards, instead of drawing them blind from the deck, you would take the first face-up cards in the order of the arrow. And only when all 12 of these cards are gone do you then refill from the deck another 12 cards. Makes for a more thinky version of Cartagena. That's called the Tortuga variant. Cartagena 2 is very, very similar to Cartagena 1. It comes with five boards, and each board has seven symbols. Again, they're double-sided, so you can mix these up, and then you're going to lay them out, but you're going to have a gap between the second board from the start and the third. But you're going to have a gap, something like this, say, and in between, you're going to place the boat. You want to make sure the boat always... You can always tell which side the boat is on. And over here... I might rotate this, actually. Just try to get more in frame. <laughs> Something like this. Have the flag near the, the end. That's this, the town here. Again, each player gets six pirate pawns, which start near the, uh, the starting location here. And like Cartagena, there is a deck of cards, but now there are seven different symbols, some of which have a gold border. I'll come back to that. But you're going to deal out seven cards to each player. Play is nearly identical to regular Cartagena, in that each player has up to three actions. They must do at least one action on their turn, and the first action that they could do, and they can do any combination, is play a card. When they play a card from their hand, they discard the card, and then they move any one of their pawns to the next unoccupied space matching that symbol. So then if later on somebody plays another one of those cards, then this pawn would skip over this one because it's occupied, and it would go to the next one. And like in Cartagena, where the end of the game has a boat, the boat is sort of all symbols. So somebody who is here, for example, and played this card would skip over this one and go onto the boat and just end its movement there. The way to get new cards is different. In Cartagena, you would have to move pawns back to the last occupied space that has room, so it has one or two pirates, because there's at most three pirates can be in a single uh, spot. In Cartagena 2, 
Instead of moving one of your pawns backward, instead you choose an opponent's pawn to move forward. But otherwise it works exactly the same. Brown, for example, could choose to move yellow forward to there. The first occupied space that has room. So it doesn't already have three pirates. And then brown would get, again, one card per pirate already there. If brown chose, they can choose the, any other player except themselves. And how many pawns are there already is how many cards that the current player gets to draw. Now, of course, now there are two parts to the board. So how does that come in? Well, that's where the boat comes in. Anybody who has at least one pawn on the boat can, as an action, move the boat to the other shore. And if there's multiple pawns, then they all come along for the ride. It's also possible for an action to move the boat back. But you're only allowed to do that if you have at least one pawn still over here that needs to cross. Now, any player who has at least one pawn in the boat may move the boat over. If at the start of your turn, you have the most pirates or are tied for the most. So in this case, let's say at the start of Blue's turn, Blue has the most pirates. At the start of their turn, they may, as a free action, move the boat over. Only at the start of their turn and only if they have the most pirates or are tied for the most pirates. And play from the boat is exactly the same. There is a new wrinkle when it comes to these gold bordered cards. So you'll see the difference between that one and this one, for example. When one player plays a card with a gold border, any players that have more than seven cards in their hand must discard down to seven. And I believe I saw in the most recent version of the rules that the player who plays this card is not considered. So they can have more cards than seven, but everybody else can't have more than seven. Now, in order to win, you have to get all your pirates into the final location, the city, the town here. To win, you, get all, you move your last pirate into the town, and then you must spend an action to raise the flag. If you don't have actions left, so you move the last pirate in of yours as your last action, you actually have to wait for your next turn in order to raise the flag as your first action. So it is possible for somebody else to also get all their pawns in, and if they have one action left after they do that, they would raise the flag and they would win. That's it. You're ready to play Cartagena 2. Now, I cover a lot of different types of games on this series. There are lots of games that I like, lots of types of games. Um, but for people who have watched a number of my videos, you kind of see a little bit of a trend of the type of games that I tend to cover. They're shorter games, but can be thinky, right? That's, that's sort of um, one of my favorite types of games, and it's the one that I often I like to cover on this channel. And there are a few designers which kind of specialize in this type of game. You can think of them all as like the patron saints of board gems. Um, Stefan Dora, most definitely. Uh, Michael Schacht, uh, Reiner Knizia, and Leo Colovini. This is Leo Colovini's most successful game. Might be his best game, although that's opinion. I happen to like Carolus Magnus quite a bit, which I've covered on the channel. Uh, but this is definitely the most famous game, and it's been published and republished a number of times uh, since 2000, when it first came out. And the most recent edition was just two or three years ago. It's interesting to look at Cartagena, especially when compared to Cartagena 2, which is Leo Colovini just kind of going back to the well and just tweaking a couple of things to make it a little bit, a little bit different. Um, we'll talk a little bit about those changes. First, I should probably try to put into words what makes Cartagena a good game. Of course, it's uh, almost that typical board gem, right? Simple rules, but thinky. And in fact, it can be very thinky because there's that official variant. I guess it's not an official variant anymore, 
but in many editions of Cartagena, including the one I showed you in the how to play part, there's an official variant called the Tortuga variant, which minimizes the luck to a great degree. So you can plan your moves out two, three, four turns ahead, even sometimes. I mean, not quite, because there's, of course, is the chaos of the other players, but it really allows you to plan because there's so much information that's face up and available for everyone to look at. You know, there's like the type of books, the type of novels that novelists like, right? The type of films that uh, film directors love. And they're not necessarily the ones that uh, the, the mass population is going to like, but they're the ones where you, you know, if you're really into the industry or you're into the hobby and you see that and you, you appreciate it on a certain level, like you have mad respect for the people who made that, even if it might not be perfect for the general population. Sometimes I think that the designers I like to cover, like Stefan Dora, like um, Leo Colovini, like Michael Schacht, are very much in that vein, that they almost design games for other game designers, that other game designers tend to really love and appreciate. I would definitely count Cartagena as one of those, because the rules are so simple to internalize. This is a game that once you learn, you will never ever forget how to play. You will always remember. You know what? And even if you don't remember like how many boards to lay out, how many pawns each player gets, how many cards you start out with, start out with. As long as everybody's on the same page, everybody's starting with the same in the same setup, it, the game still works. It is so flexible. You know, a lot of games, you change one thing here, one thing there, and the game just breaks down, right? And in that sense, Cartagena is a very robust game. You can play it with six pawns, which is the, the full way to play, but you could play with five or even four uh, if you want a shorter game, right? You can take away boards, you can add boards. It's a game system. And you can tweak things around the margins and it's still basically exactly the same game. And so actually I think this is a great game for hobbyists to have in their repertoire in that this is a game you can whip out with anybody and you it takes you two minutes to teach the game super simple to learn you don't have to look anything up in the rule book right it's just it's like a game that you feel like almost has always existed it's great because you can plan ahead you can think ahead a bit right you can plan for a bigger move it does have the potential for big plays Right? A lot of games, including a lot of Leo Colovini games, I should, I should say, they don't have big plays. Michael Schacht is an example. There's a designer. I find that a lot of his games, I love his games, but they, they don't have the, they don't afford the opportunity to have these big plays. And sometimes big plays are really satisfying, right? You know, you're, you're doing little things here and there, but, you know, maybe you're working towards the big thing and then you do that and you zoom ahead, right? That's really satisfying. And Cartagena has that a bit because, of course, you're able to jump ahead very far if the spaces on the board are occupied. And if you have a lot of that card, of that symbol, then you can set that up yourself, right? You can set a lot of your pawns on those spaces, and then later on, you're, you're zooming ahead. Of course, other players may take advantage of that, but they also can't really stop you from taking advantage of your own setup. So yeah, some people will be along for the ride, but you know you're gonna benefit. The game can be super, super quick to play, right? Take away a few pawns, take away a few boards. You're playing just a 20 minute filler game, really. Um, but play with the full six boards and six pawns for the, for the full experience. I understand the new version might actually change those a bit. I know the Ravensburger edition, and you'll recognize it because it has the, the faux Captain Jack Sparrow on the cover. They have, I think they have fewer boards. They definitely have fewer pawns. So you're almost playing like an abbreviated version of Cartagena if you're playing the Ravensburger edition. But again, still works fine. That's what I'm saying, right? As a base, the game just works great. I personally think if Cartagena had come out earlier than 2000, so if it came out of the 90s, maybe even the 80s, right? If it came out earlier, I guarantee you, hobbyists at that time would have come up with a million billion variants for this game 
right? They would have been, they would have done stuff like, oh, they're pirates, so maybe they have guns. Maybe there's a way to shoot each other. And they'll add that as just some simple rule that tweaks it. And it's one of those games like uh, Eagle Airgun that is just a simple base, but you can add so much stuff to it if you want to. I will say that I find it, maybe for newer hobbyists, there might feel like there's something missing. Uh, because I think nowadays people are used to more stuff. But, you know, a lot of modern hobbyists might find the game a little bit repetitive. So I can understand why Ravensburger, for example, might try to shorten the game a bit. And you can certainly try it as well. Even if you have the full game, six boards, six pawns, uh, shrink it down. Try five pawns and five boards. If you're playing with kids, maybe even go four and four. But I mean, I wouldn't have the number of boards and the number of pawns be crazy different from each other. If you keep them basically the same, you can shorten or lengthen the game super easy, right? Uh, so as a short game, as a short filler, just play with four boards, uh, four pawns, say, still works. Still works. One downside in Cartagena is but this is easily avoidable as long as you warn people at the beginning. And that is that if people don't plan very well, you know, people get excited, they move their pawns far ahead, they're doing great, but they leave one pawn way, way in the back. And if eventually all the other pawns have moved on, it would be very, very hard for that player to get that pawn to catch up, right? You want to keep everybody together. You don't want one person to fall too far behind. If you do that, you will lose because it'll be so much effort for you to try to play cards and get them caught up. But it's easily avoidable as long as you just give people a heads up in advance. Don't let one pawn fall too far behind. So I want to talk a little bit about Cartagena 2 because it's changed a little bit. How has it changed? Has it changed for the better? The most obvious difference in Cartagena 2 is that now instead of the boat being at the end and being the end goal, now it's in the middle. The boards are separated into two groups and you have a boat in the middle. So that's a really interesting thing, right? But it's also a thing that you can easily do in Cartagena 1. So what are the other changes in Cartagena 2? Well, one is instead of moving a pawn backwards of your own in order to gain cards, you move an opponent's pawn forward. It doesn't really make a huge difference. You can really play either way. And in fact, the most recent edition, actually, they present the two. You can, you can play one and then the other. And they suggest, oh, you can try drawing cards if you move a pawn back, or you can draw cards if you move an opponent's pawn forward. Or you can do one in the first part of the game and the other in the second part of the game. Or you can allow players to do both. It's not better or worse, it's just different. I guess it could help keep the games close. Because um, if one person is quite far behind, uh, like I said uh, earlier about, you know, it's easy for one person to just leave a pawn way, way, way behind. And then they're kind of screwed. It's very possible in Cartagena 2, by moving pawns, uh, opponent's pawns forward, players are encouraged to move the pawn forward of the player who's furthest back, right? Because it's the least, that person's the least likely to win anyway. So give them a helping hand. So that actually kind of helps that a little bit, but it's a very minor change. You can do either one. The other main change is that in Cartagena 2, instead of there being uh, six symbols and six types of cards, there are seven symbols and seven types of cards. What's the difference? Not a lot. Um, there's not actually going to be a huge change in feel. It does speed the game up slightly, which is good for Cartagena 2 because the boat in the middle slows it down. So you can easily play Cartagena 1 with Cartagena 2 boat rules instead of having th uh, six boards end to end. Just have a gap between 3 and 3, put the boat in the middle and add that rule. And the rule is really interesting. It's a really fun fun little rule, right? Um, there's lots of little extra considerations. Like when one player gets a pawn onto the boat, there there's this rush for other players to try to get a pawn on the boat as well with the expectation that one player is going to move the boat, right? Maybe on the, as their free move at the start of their turn. And so you get that free move to benefit you as well. So there's a little bit of pressure on that. But you can also be kind of 
kind of a jerk with it. So in one game of Cartagena 2 that I played, one player, they were able to get all their uh, pawns. They had three pawns on the boat, and their remaining pawns were already ahead of the boat, right? The other two players still had pawns in, in back. They still had pawns on the first island, I guess you'd say. That player, the player who already has three pirates on the boat and three past it, they had the most pirates, which means they were the captain, which means that the other players weren't able to get as many pawns in that boat and be able to move the boat as a free action. So that player, by keeping a couple of those pawns on the boat and focusing on getting the others ahead, was actually able to keep the other players from having a free action. And that meant the other players, one of them would have to use their action in order to move the boat. And of course, there's two players who still needed to, to move pawns, and each pawn, each player was hoping that the other player would be the one to spend the action. So it was a really neat twist. So I actually think the boat uh, thing is really, really great. And definitely, if you have first Cartagena, throw in that uh, variant uh, to try. Uh, if you get bored of the base game, throw in that variant. It mixes it up, and it's a really great addition. You don't need Cartagena 2 to be honest. Just Cartagena 1, but have that as a little uh, extra variant, a little extra expansion uh, to spice the game up. So this new version sort of has Cartagena 1 and 2 together in the box. However, the Cartagena 2 part is not seven symbols on five boards. So for this, they went back to the original Cartagena. It's just six symbols on six boards, or maybe it might be eight boards now. And they just include rules for having the boat in the middle instead of the end. And they say, oh, you can play the first part of Cartagena or the second part, or you can play a big long game, first part, then second part. The newest edition of Cartagena has a lot of variants. So it basically has all the methods from Cartagena 2, the changes in Cartagena 2, as variants that you can add in. So there's a whole list of variants in the rule book of all these different ways you can change up the game, which is great. Like I said, Cartagena is a great base that you can change and tweak. Yeah, one of the variants though is this black, they call it the black, the black magic woman variant. You are required to play Santana while playing this game, by the way. Black magic woman, um, yeah, special powers. No, just get that out of my face. Detract from the simplicity of the game. Every game expects it now, so I, the, all the new hobbyists expect there to be, and if they don't have it, they miss it, right? Oh, this game, it's missing something. Maybe it's special powers. No. I really hate that trend, personally. Um, detracts from the simplicity, um, but I can understand why the publisher would add it in order to... Because people are going to miss it if they don't have it. But it makes the game worse. Cartagena is still a great game today. It's possible that a lot of newer hobbyists might feel like there's something a little bit missing from it. Um, the fact that it is such a simple rule set, and once you learn it, you never forget it, makes it a great game to have in your collection because you can whip it out with any gamers. You can whip it out with kids, with non-gamers, with hobbyists, and it works on all levels. And you, oftentimes you don't you only have to look up the rules. It's a great game, you know, it doesn't take up much space, pretty easy to get used. Uh, it's just a great simple game to have in your collection uh, to play in really any circumstance. Thanks for watching. Remember, older games like Cartagena don't stop being good just because new games come out. Take care.